I don't know if you can hear me, but I made it across. It's really bad here, Verlaine. I think... I think there's something here. Here we go again. Hope everybody's doing all right. Sorry, making an adjustment. <clears throat> I've got um, a little less than an hour before I got to take off. We're going to go and uh, meet with Henry's veterinarian who's going to show us the x-rays from the surgery. It's something we feel like we need to see. So... We're going to go do that, kind of bracing ourselves for it. But uh, for now, it's um, it's time to do battle against the xenomorph. It's time to, to sh sort of shore ourselves up. Rat dog, my emotional support animal, is downstairs sleeping. So just us, just you and me. I mean, no support whatsoever. Um, anybody remember what we were uh, trying to do here? Find alternate route to spaceflight terminal. Oh, shit. Really? Really? I mean, how fair is that? He dropped out of the ceiling as soon as I walked in. She. I think it's a he. Isn't the she the queen? And then the other ones are male. Dropped out of the ceiling right in front of me. I mean, how fair is that? <sighs> Been working on the edit, uh, just about done with it. Uh, uh, special that I'm... Okay, 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 okay. 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 I'm sorry. Uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> um, yeah. Death comes quickly. Death comes quickly. All right. Come on. Come on. Can drop out. All right. It's a trigger when I walk through the door, then, isn't it? Okay. You can't see me. You can't see me. Uh, that's totally bogus. Shit. I hear the feet. I don't see the... The elongated head, spindly hands, and darkly sleek exoskeleton that is usually a foreshadowing of my doom. Now I don't see it. Damn it. This is obviously my ob Oh, look! the buttons, do this, be discreet. Um. OK. 
okay, he's in here, so let's just operate under the assumption he's not going to walk back, retrace his steps. I mean, this is an efficient creature, is it not? Oh, fuck. I can't even see. And do xenomorphs, you know, are they negatively impacted by secondhand smoke? I think a legitimate question. Let's just, let's just, let's just. Everybody breathe, enhance your calm, align your chakras. Let the positive energies guide us. Can't see a damn thing. Oh shit, is he in front of me? Pardon me. Do you have a moment to talk about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? He does hold the pose like, you know, he's kind of a glamour. Alien stops and kind of arches the back and throws his head in a specific direction. You know, I mean, he knows. When you have it, when you have that intangible, it's, it's one of those things where you, I mean, if you got it, flaunt it. I need to go in that room. The problem is, is that... And he needs a name. <sighs> I guess I got a little too cute there, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, okay. <sighs> anyway, I've been... Um, I just finished the, uh, I think... I think the edit's done. I like to go back and look at them later. Does that make me just totally? Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm like anal, you know. But I, before I release something to the public, I find myself, you know, going through and kind of manicuring it um, quite a bit. And uh, sometimes you just got to release it. And it's funny because, you know, as much time and attention and energy as I take with the broadcast, it's the ones I vamp that I don't prepare for. Those are the ones. I, I did one at 3 o'clock in the morning after the Unholy Trinity tour. I was pissed off about something. I was sleep deprived. I just opened the microphone and just vented for about 40 minutes. That show remains one of the listener favorites. I just did it. And released it before I had a chance to change my mind. So for all the hours and hours and hours that I'll spend manicuring something. And it does alright. And then there's the broadcast, you know, where you're just shooting from the hip. Totally unprepared. Just sort of expelling whatever thoughts crawl into your skull. Um, yeah, those are, the, those are the ones that take off stick in people's memory. Maybe there's a lesson there. Okay, come on, baby.
He needs a name. Yesterday, the options were, um, I think I mentioned Ruprecht. Uh, someone else said, um, oh God, I'm trying to remember. There were so many good offerings and now they escaped me. But the Xenomorph, uh, he needs a name. He needs an affectionate moniker that we can refer to from time to time. He's behind me. Come on, baby. Now he's going to hear some of this, right? See, he poses under the light, like he's conscious, like he knows. It's like skinny, pretty people always say, well, I don't know, they don't know it. Don't. Skinny, pretty people know it. And they just mask it with a sense of false modesty. Yeah, he knows it. He knows it. see a damn thing. Holy shnikes. It's right behind me. Shit! I blame you, really. Let's take a look at some of the names here. Stompy Thomas. I like that. Winston is a good one. Zeno, I like Winston. Fred. Stompy. Maria, head of housekeeping. That's not bad. It's not bad. I don't know. I think it's a dude. Um... Stompy Thomas. Yeah. Okay, for now, we may change that. Is the Resident Evil 2 remake already out, Timothy? And how has it fared? You know, some of these games... They're affectionate products of their time, but they they just don't have the legs beyond, you know, nostalgia. They're not good for much. God damn it, he's already down. Where is he? crawl because it's quiet. It's slow, but it's quiet. And you just stay away from me, Mr. Man.
Where is he? Where is he? Oh, shit. He's in the other room. Okay. Okay, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right turn. We're walking, we're walking. Stompy Thomas. He meanders about the halls. He is so deadly, so dangerous. That sounds close. Real close. Like, I, I can smell the, uh, the garlic on his breath. He's obviously been eating Italian. Shit! RE2 is a complete reimagining of the PS1 game. Is it available for the PC? Because I don't do uh, PlayStation, really. This is just tedious, what this is. Retracing your same damn steps over and over again. You know, I want forward momentum. I want... You know, I, I need the linear story to... I need those dots to connect. Power goes out, big drama. Then I have to go here. No, where do I go? Really, the game is a series of errands that you just have to run under threat of death by. Big mouth, which produces little mouth. Like, like he, he opened his mouth and then he opened his mouth. It sounds redundant, but it's actually not in this context. I always like to refer to that joke about the uh, baby alien that gets pregnant. And the mother says, who's going to feed its mouth? And who's going to feed the little mouth inside the mouth? Never gets old. That joke never gets old. Which brings the question, do you believe that there's life out there in the universe besides us? I do. Fuck! I mean, the idea that there were hundreds of millions of galaxies, and we would be it... We'd be the only life-producing atmosphere. I just don't buy it. There's something out there. Now, it might be something that you and I could never recognize as life. That'd be interesting. It's not like uh, Star Trek, the original series with the class M planets theory, that if life existed, it would sort of look like us because of atmosphere and gravity, which allowed them essentially to put people in rubber suits and green paint and call them aliens. No, no, no. I think alien life would look so different than anything we ever expected or anticipated. in the films when alien life is discovered the military always assumes that it's dangerous but I Shh. 
I need an elven invisibility cloak is what I need. I need genres to cross so that I can get down the goddamn hallway. <sighs> Enhance your calm. Enhance your calm. I've got about 20 minutes to crack this. I have to get the generator started and then I have to get... back to another spot do this e and then oh shit you do that and then you hold that and then this happens it's all very dramatic now maybe I should wait for him maybe that's a scripted thing he comes down the, the hallway so now I just sit here and maybe I'll wait for him to walk through maybe patience is uh is the key, right? The only way to really speed up is to slow down. Let's turn physics on its ear. Let's... Let's just take a deep breath. Treat this like our meditation app that Natalie downloaded on her phone. Just take a few moments and close your eyes. And concentrate on your breathing. Only your breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Thinking of nothing else. Absolutely mindful of only your breathing. In and out. In and out. This is a lot easier, or a lot harder than it sounds, by the way, because my brain's always shifting. I'm always like, did I do this today? How many times have I died horribly in the last 15 minutes? Like, is this just a, a, a necessarily... Uh, difficult part of the game. Is there a reason that I'm not able to walk 25 steps without being impaled by an alien tail? Damn you, Stompy Thomas. Why? <sighs> anyway, focusing only on your breathing for 10 minutes sounds easy to you. Try it. And this app absolutely knows when you start to drift. So as you lie there, breathing in, and out and all of a sudden you start to drift the app will say now your mind might have started to think about other things beside your breathing that's okay you haven't done anything wrong just a reminder to focus on your breathing and it's weird it's like there's somebody in the room watching you After 10 minutes, though, I, I will say we did feel relaxed. That was very close. Very close. I had somebody say once that uh, if aliens came and they were trying to sort of infiltrate, they wanted to be everywhere but be unnoticed by human beings. The ultimate disguise for an alien would be doorknobs. I mean, you, th you think about it, they're everywhere. Doorknobs are everywhere. Oh, you need a sample of you know, human touch? Oh, no problem. You want to listen inside any room anywhere? No problem. Doorknobs. It was a bizarre suggestion at the time and one that I now find ingenious. What if all of the doorknobs in the civilized world were actually sentient creatures from another from another planet, solar system, galaxy? I mean, right now you're looking at your doorknob and you're twisting your head a little bit thinking, hmm, what a great disguise that would be.
Where the fuck is he? I hear him. Did I escape him? Can he come into the ductwork? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I need that. Stompy Thomas doesn't like the ducts. Okay, restart generator. Hold, press E. I've got 20 minutes exactly. I'm gonna grab Rad Dog. We're gonna go on a field trip to the vet. Not because Rad Dog needs a vet, but because she's small enough, you can carry her pretty much anywhere. She's a good girl. She seems to notice Henry's absence a little bit, um, but she was always more of an independent dog. I mean, they, they were pals, but they weren't uh, a bonded pair like from from when they were puppies. So um, occasionally it, it does feel like she's looking around for him, sniffing around for him. But overall, um, she seems to be doing okay. The rest of us, we have our ups and downs. It's, it's tough. We, uh, did I say this before yesterday or the day before? But we, uh, and I've never done this with a dog in my life. We had him uh, cremated and we had his ashes put in a tiny candle urn. And there's an inscription on it. The inscription says, Henry, rescued by a few, loved by thousands. And it's got one of those little battery-powered little votive candles that comes on on its own every evening for a few hours. I don't know what comforts us. He just... He slips in right on top of me. So, you know, I, I know he's gone, you know. I know he's gone, but there's a weird comforting thing that um, that happens knowing that he's, you know, that, that he's in that way kind of still with us. I don't know. It's weird. I, I learned that about myself. I learned uh, about my own sort of comfort mechanism. Uh, the funds are set to be transferred to the Humane Society of Tulsa, $33,000 for the Henry van. We're kind of waiting on, on them. Uh, apparently it's an automatic payout that happens once a month to certified charities. So you're at their mercy. You gotta freaking wait on them. Um, but we're watching that closely. I contacted them yesterday and Humane Society dropped him a line as well saying, is there any way to sort of manually force deposit this so we can go ahead and get started? But, you know, there's such a m massive enterprise that it's it's not like... <laughs> Honestly, I think they like having the money in the account for an extra few weeks so it can perhaps generate interest. I don't know how these charity... Uh, they use PayPal. And you know, PayPal's a motherfucker. But PayPal, when it comes to certified charities, doesn't take as, as big as a piece, um, which is fortunate. But it's still, I mean, I think it came to one thing. 30th of what we raised it was about a grand for 33,000 and still part of me is like for a fucking transfer you know I, I'd like to see that go to the charity but the infrastructure with GoFundMe is so good and 
their giving models and uh, uh, you know the way to communicate with everybody who donates. It's it's such a fluid system that it is uh, it's easily just it was an easy choice for me. Uh, I know there are a lot of fund me and it's a GoFundMe is a for profit company, but. Uh, you know, at, at that point, it's just kind of a necessary platform. It's it just is what it is. So, um, what are, yeah, yeah. Zomber asked how much equipment I was carrying. I don't know if that matters. Do I make too much noise when I'm sneaking around? Smoke bomb, flashbang, bolt gun. Oh, I have a flamethrower. Well, that's good information to have. Now, if I see him coming, I can give him a little incentive. To... Anybody else remember uh, air hockey? See this table? My buddy Tony lived across the street. His family owned a furniture store. They had a pool table, and they had air hockey and foosball. And going to his house was like going to the freaking arcade. We just thought that was the coolest thing ever, air hockey. It's fun. It's still fun. It, unless you get your fingers caught between the puck and the uh, paddle. You know, then it sucks. Because it really does sting. Especially when somebody's playing to win. Okay, you see him down there. You see him down there. All right, he went up in the... All right, come on. Come on, let's focus. Well, I don't care if it rains or freezes, as long as I got that plastic Jesus sitting on the dashboard of my car. Okay. Alright, come on. Save here. Save. Come on. Okay. Good thing I saved. What do you do when you get nervous? Do you sing? Do you? You bounce your leg, you bounce your knee. Yeah, Johan's probably right. I probably alerted him to my presence with the flamethrower. Now I have no flamethrower left. Okay, what else do I have? Bolt gun, stun baton. Does the stun baton even work on him? Pipe bomb, EMP mic. Can I make a can I make a Molotov? Let's try it. Hmm. I like the sound of that. Noisemaker, flare, bolt gun. Okay. Bitch. It's not even fun. Ten minutes. I'm going to beat this mother. I can do it in ten minutes. I just need to get past this little section here. 
The channel's not called Seth Andrews Gaming Badly for no reason. I am not, I have no reflexes. You know, when I'm in a crisis like this, my mind moves at the speed of litigation. There he goes. Restart generator. Restart generator. to save. in the back of my head like this would been, have been an evolutionary benefit wouldn't it I disagreed with something that ate me. Normally, Chris, there aren't many hugely frustrating parts of the game. It's usually pretty linear, and it's not like you're... I don't know, it's not this kind of tedious trial and error bullshit. Notice that I'm bravely walking instead of crawling. Because I am more than mere mortal men. You don't scare me. Okay, see that big safe spot over there? Six minutes.
Stompy Thomas is killing me. What? What just happened? I've already done this. Load game. Load current save. Maybe this, oh, I see, he's already fallen out of the ceiling, so. It's just, it just seems to be the same. He's very angry, very angry. And there's just no reason to be that way. Get me through this door. Is there any booty up here I can get? Bounty? Flamethrower few. Since the double entendre crowd is already all over me on that. Okay, flamethrower. I have just enough to spit at him. Pardon me, sir, but do you have any flamethrower fuel? Sparks are a nice touch, by the way. Highly stressful. Highly stressful. I love all these throwbacks to the 1979 Ridley Scott classic. Just such a great and affectionate nod to uh, to the classic film. Which I think still holds up. I mean, I would see a lot of people would think it was slow. Um, and the cliches that were born from the original Alien, I know, probably make it less than scary for a lot of people. But I still think, with a few exceptions, it really does hold water. It really does stand the test of time. Excuse me. smart man would, would know what to do. Oh. Now that the alien is walking among us, you know what this space station doesn't have? Conspicuously? Doorknobs. Coincidence? I think not.
I'm going to have to find a safe point here. And we're going to go consult the veterinarian. We're not going to chew him out. We just want to see the x-rays and know how bad the condition was. We just need, honestly, we just need to know. I don't think that makes us morbid. <sighs> Save. All right. Have a wonderful Friday evening, my friends. And I'll uh, catch you back here uh, next time.